I can tell you that we had a giant read-through with all the cast in October, and I think pretty much everybody cried at one point. Hey everybody, really good news. The producers during the commentaries for season seven specifically talked about season eight scenes specific to Cersei Lannister's character. So I'll play that clip, then I'll explain what it is that they're teasing for season eight. So just another reminder that it's always important to listen to the DVD commentaries because they do talk about what's happening next season. There are no visual effect shots in this sequence. No. But this scene was shot in the paint hall in Belfast in our illustrious set. And in the map room that they were about to walk down into, Dan and David asked us to make it an exterior location in an upcoming episode, but I can't tell you why. But that'll pay off too. The courtyard always was thought of as being a an exterior courtyard, even before she had the map painted. You know, hence the sunlight. Right. It used to be at least a story taller, but there was a need to see the sky in this coverage. Forthcoming coverage. It would require outside investment. It will indeed. I need to expand my armies, my navies. My hand, Kyburn, has made overtures to the Golden Company. Oh, Chris, you've had that map painted in your living room. <laughs> no, they copied the one in my living room for this. I too would like them to recover some things that belong to We've actually had the map now painted on the... Rest assured. Well, it's, it's on a big picture in the office. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen it. Coming up the stairs. Yeah. But because of this commentary and because of information that HBO has released publicly, we have an idea for the stuff that they were teasing that they would be paying off for Cersei, like a scene that they would be paying off during season eight. So no worries, no spoilers. I'll just be talking about stuff that they've released publicly. But yes, spoilers for season seven stuff, obviously. What they're saying is, is that they designed this floor map specifically to be an outdoor set, meaning that it's like the gods would at Winterfell, is that you can see the sky when you're standing it, you're not covered by anything. So why would Cersei need to be able to see the sky? Well, I think it's important for a couple reasons, but the obvious one, and not the one that I think they were talking about, was just the visual metaphor of snow falling on the map, the entire map of Westeros. Like at the end of season seven, the moment that snow hits it is the same moment that the Night King brings down the wall. So they close down the season with a nice metaphor. Winter is officially here. Shit is on. You're all screwed. But what I actually think they're talking about when they say, you know, we're going to be paying something off, the fact that this is open air, is really that Cersei is going to be able to see the dragons flying overhead. Because they've been talking about episodes they've been filming in Dubrovnik recently with Cersei. She even has like a new costume. The silver epaulets of season seven on her costume are now gold. You can make all the Valonqar jokes that you want. Gold will be their shrouds. Because we know Kit Harrington and Emilio Clark are there and there's no big crazy battles happening and David Nutter is directing the episodes that are not supposed to be the big crazy battles, episodes one, two, and four. And it would be really weird for Jon and Daenerys to fly down to King's Landing to meet with Cersei before the big battle with the Night King, the second big battle of Winterfell that they've also been filming separately at a different location. The moment that they're going to pay off for Cersei probably comes in episode four, which is also a very important episode because of where it falls between the big battles and the actual finale. Remember, there are only six episodes and because Dan and Dave are directing the series finale and they're not known as like their big battle directors, that's Miguel Sapochnik, there is probably not much of a big final battle in the actual series finale. If there's going to be a big final battle, that's probably going to be episode five, and it might just spill into the beginning of episode six. Episode six was probably just aftermath and dealing with what they do to rebuild the kingdom. Anybody that isn't dead after episode five. Working in reverse, if there's going to be a meeting between John, Daenerys, and Cersei, it's probably going to be in episode four. So that's probably what we're seeing happen here, because if there was an actual big battle happening, there would be hundreds and hundreds of extras that they'd be filming. And this is a completely different scene. But regardless of what they're filming right now, just remember they don't film in chronological order. They group things together just based on how they can schedule all the actors. And if there's like a really big battle, it gets extra nuts. But you'll probably continue to see like little small moments between a couple different main actors, then the really big crazy battle stuff, which is kind of spoilery, so I won't post that stuff here. But you can imagine there's going to be two really big battles, one at Winterfell, 
and won at King's Landing towards the end of the season. But just to talk a little bit more about Cersei during Season 8, Jamie said this really important line at the end of Season 7, where he basically gave her two options, both of which were terrible, and it was all because of her backstabbing Jon Snow and Daenerys. Oh, we're not going to be sending any help for them. Let the monsters kill each other. And while they battle in the north, we take back the lands that belong to us. And then what? And then we rule. When the fighting in the north is over, someone wins. You understand that, don't you? If the dead win, they march south and kill us all. If the living win, and we've betrayed them, they march south and kill us all. So either way, Cersei's kind of screwed, but you kind of have to laugh at the way she deals with stuff like this. So it doesn't really tell you whether or not they're successful in beating the Night King in what seems like it's going to be the episode 3 battle for Winterfell, the second battle for Winterfell. But because of Daenerys' vision, the snow, and the ruins of King's Landing in the Iron Throne, a lot of people are just wondering if that's actually going to become a reality and the Night King will bring Viserion down and just destroy parts of King's Landing. Or maybe if that's destruction that happens during the final battle between the army in the north, Jon Snow and Daenerys' forces, in Cersei and King's Landing. Because regardless of which dragons do this damage, I do think that it's going to come to pass. And remember that it is snowing in King's Landing, so that explains why it's snowing here. Like even though people wonder if the Night King brings winter with him, he can create a storm, but relatively quickly it's going to look like this in King's Landing no matter what, just because of normal snowfall. I've done a couple videos about why I think that they're positioning Cersei to be the true villain of the final season, just because it's easier to connect with her and understand where her headspace is at. You've never heard the Night King speak. You kind of know what he wants, but that's only because of things that George R. Martin has implied and the TV show has kind of gotten off book and he still hasn't introduced a Night King in the books. There is no character like that unless we meet one during book six. So if you heard people complain about like the big CG villains in movies in the past year, like rings of garbage in the sky type villains, that's what the Night King is slowly turning into. So that's why I don't think that he will ultimately be the final villain. I think that will be Cersei, they'll have their big final battle, then they'll deal with the aftermath in episode 6. But I know a lot of you have been asking for specific death predictions and characters. There are certain characters that I'm 100% are going to die. There are a lot that I'm on the fence about right now. I'm waiting until they finish filming to do more videos about that. Because you do get a lot of clues from actors doing interviews. And I do think that we're going to see a Comic-Con trailer. Because they'll be done filming by the beginning of the summer. Comic-Con is at the end of July. So they will have some footage to show off and they'll be back on their normal hype schedule. If you remember the earlier seasons, they would start dropping teasers towards the end of the year. They would really ramp up in January and February, then boom, they would drop the season in April. That's probably what's going to happen for season eight. So for everybody that's bummed out that there are no new episodes this year, they will actually be dropping new footage. We probably just won't see it till the third and fourth quarter of the year. But let me know in the comments, what do you think comes before that big final battle? Jon Snow and Daenerys try to meet with Cersei, maybe they try to make a deal with her and she brushes them off and that leads to something worse. Or do you think that the Night King is successful in destroying Winterfell, marches south, Jon Snow and Daenerys then try to fly to Cersei to try and get help before the army gets to King's Landing and destroys everyone. Either way, it does seem like that final battle will be happening at the Red Keep, and it makes sense because they're the two most important locations on the show. You go back to the pilot episode, you have Winterfell, then you have the Red Keep and the Iron Throne, the thing that we've been talking about for the past eight years. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.